Awesome. But um, something I wanted to really thank you for was I remember in a cameo that um, Sam bought for me, you said that you saw one of my videos that I posted and it was about my mental health and That's that right. you were very inspired by it. So thank you. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the sort of amazing things about um, which I hadn't even thought about, but one of the things, I mean, obviously with social media, when people are, there's people, a lot of people that are struggling and it, it becomes such a thing to, you know, express, um, you know, your one's own, one's own feelings on social media. Um, and what I didn't realize was how many times people had played, who had played the game now, this doesn't relate to you, I don't think, but, you know, as far as the game is concerned, um, how many people kind of came out of a woodwork and were like, oh, this game really helped me get through mm -hmm. something, um, yeah. you know, for whatever it was. And I, of course, that makes sense to me now in, in retrospect, but uh, yeah, good. I remember, yeah, um, I think the game really has helped me in a way because it's because the game is so big and expansive that it's like yeah. if you're feeling like you're having a really crappy day, you could just be Arthur and ride on your horse and antagonize Micah until you just feel happy <laughs> or do something <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I would do the same thing. I, I feel like I need to go back and play the game. I haven't I haven't played it for quite a while and I feel like to go back into the the you know single player campaign, I was, I'm, I'm always like, oh god, but it's it's so, so it's such a massive you know endeavor. Uh, do I want to commit to that? But I know that when I'm in it, I would do the same thing like you're talking about. If I was just wanted to escape reality for an evening, mm -hmm. um, I could go and go. You know what? I don't need to follow this the campaign story. I can just go and mess around on the horse and 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 explore things and and not really do anything and it's super relaxing um even though i'm you know murdering people but, uh, very enjoyable murdering people and accidentally killing my horse constantly oh my god that's always the worst part when you're like if our, they kill you and you're like oh god i've got my um, my horse survivor i'm ready i'm ready and it's like it's too late it's already dead and you're like, oh, i know but I, I i have a friend of mine <laughs> I have a friend of mine who uh, had worked uh, when the game when he first got the game. He was working so hard to get that. What is it? That like white Arabian or that Arabian horse? That, yeah, yeah. It's a white horse, I think, right? White Arabian, yeah. Yeah. It, okay. So he was, you know, he was like fixated on getting this horse, and it took him like a week of playing off and on, you know, to track down this horse, and then he'd fail, and then he'd try to get the horse again, and finally he got it. And I remember him texting me going. I got the horse, man. I got it. And literally 15 minutes later, he texted me and went, I killed my horse. <laughs> he spent all this time and all he did, he accidentally, the horse, a, a train clipped the horse and uh, killed the horse. And he was like, <laughs> screw this. I'm done. I'm done. And he had, I think he had to walk away from the game for like two weeks because he was so pissed off about it. Oh, no. <laughs> You know what I found out recently now? I've played this game the whole way through, but I didn't realize that you were Harleen Fontaine in, um, in L.A. Noir. Yeah. And like now that because they had the facial recognition, I was like, oh, my God, it's Peter's face. How did I not realize this? Well, so yeah, was, because my first of all, it was younger, but I was like, I'm totally smooth. Right. Because Harleen Fontaine mm -hmm. is like. Well, they did that for a reason. Also, everyone had to be really smooth because it was easier for the motion capture um, to do that. And, but yeah, but I think like with this game, most people are used to seeing my actual, my real face. I usually have some sort of facial hair, but yeah, Dr. Fontaine is, is just smooth and his hair's all like clean cut and everything. Yeah. It was a long time ago. It was. Um, is it weird to like go back and play another villain? Like was that, I know he's not technically, well, is he? He How totally is. is. Harlan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. He's totally, he's totally one of the puppet masters. It's kind of a strange, the game has a, is, has a, an interesting 
um, storytelling to it. And I can't remember all of the details because I haven't played it in a long time. But Harlan Fontaine is one of the puppet masters um, behind a lot of the events that happen. However, what's interesting as a villain that you, you don't really encounter him as a no. player. You only see him through the, these newspaper <laughs> clippings that you collect and find. And then you get to see these little video um, cutscenes throughout the game. And then you see something that you see, then you see some other cutscenes, and I don't know, towards the end and whatever. Um, and he, he meets his demise, but he is one, he's like a puppet master, but it's an odd, it's sort of odd to me because you don't get the satisfaction as a player to kill him or to, yeah. or to, or to, you know, get to, or to be killed by him or whatever. Like he's just, it just sort of happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember watching that recently. Like I just watched it back and I was kind of like, this is just some random guy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. When you start, you're like, why are they focusing on this guy? Like this creepy dude. I mean, who's they, then you realize, oh, they keep coming back to him for a reason. But I don't know how the game plays out in L.A. Noir. If you don't collect those yeah, newspapers, then you don't you miss a huge like... element of the story, right? Yeah. I, I know mean, that he, you have to interview Courtney Sheldon at one point, and he's there. That's right. Almost like a lawyer, I guess, like acting like his lawyer or attorney or something. And I'm like, yeah, oh, but he just sort of is in the background. <laughs> he doesn't really do a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, yeah, like, I, I remember it coming out. I think I was relatively young at the time as well. Well, I think it was like, I mean, it, I feel like it probably came out around the same time as the first Red Dead. Yeah. You know, That's back then they could that. make those games like, with I feel like within like a few months. Yeah. You know, but anyway, go on, sorry. No problem. Um. So... Obviously, we're affiliated with um, Rockstar a little bit. So obviously, I imagine you still had to do the audition process for Micah. But was it a bit more like, you know, we've seen you as a villain, so you could kind of, we've, we we trust you, we could kind of put you back in there? Or was it kind of like, oh, I have to audition like everyone else? I have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea what their thought process was regarding it. Um, you know, I went, <clears throat> it was a right, normal audition. Well, normal in the way that auditions are, you know, can be very abnormal. Um, and I didn't really know at all what I was auditioning for. You know, no, no one did who, who, who was involved in this uh, um, because they keep everything so tight lipped, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I knew it was for Rockstar, but of course the project name was um, a made up name yeah. Even the stuff, even the monologue that I had to prepare to come in to audition for, uh, audition with, uh, I don't think had anything to do with a Western theme. Wow, okay. It, it, because they didn't want to give anything away. But I remember it being an extremely violent, um, aggressive <laughs> monologue. I, I, I remember it was a very gruesome monologue. Uh, so it, it was, I was clearly going out for someone who was uh, probably not, you know, not a nice guy, yeah. but I had no idea. And then I didn't hear anything for months. And then finally I got the, the call, but then, and obviously when we started the game, um, well, not obviously, I guess, we, a lot of us didn't have any idea. We didn't, none of us had any idea what the storyline ultimately was gonna be. And uh, I'm sure the other guys have told you this, um, <clears throat> as well but we were kind of get we were getting scripts as we were going along yeah not in order because, yeah so the, and i think that the writing was evolving as the years went on as well and they were kind of formulating the various storylines and arcs and, and and things and it, it wasn't until i was involved in the game for quite a while before someone came up to me and said i think micah is going to be end up being one of the main bad guys. Oh. But I didn't, I hadn't, I was just playing the guy like a normal, just a, just a dickhead. Like, like, cause yeah, that's how it was like written. An asshole in the guy. I was like, yeah. all right, that makes sense to me. And they're like, don't change anything that you're doing. 
just keep going, keep playing it, but that is maybe how it's going to end up. And they were also like, don't tell the rest of the cast members either. Oh, uh, okay. Just keep doing what you're doing and we'll see how things evolve as the script comes along. And uh, so I was like, great, awesome. You know, I don't know. Every time I'd show up at work, it was it was new stuff. So it was super exciting to get whatever they were throwing at us. So kind of like the revelation when, this is obviously a spoiler if you haven't played the game and if you haven't, have been on yet, but... Um, so <laughs> right, at this point, spoilers, do spoilers really matter at this point? Yeah. I mean, I come on. Know. Besides, does it really spoil anything ever? Everyone talks about spoilers. Like, I can watch a thing over and over again, or play a game over and over again, and I experience it kind of for the first time when I'm playing, you know, when I'm playing it or watching it, yeah. even if I know the outcome, because I haven't seen that actual, the way they've done it. Not anyway, exactly. that's, a, that's a tangent. Go okay. on, sorry. So, like, the revelation that Michael was the rat all along, was that kind of a surprise for the rest of the cast as well? And you're kind of like, oh, I already knew. <laughs> Well, I think by the time, I, th I feel like it just sort of evolved organically then. And pretty much as as we went along, we all kind of figured it out. Yeah. That obviously, Micah is a total asshole. And of course, it makes sense based on his character that he would be looking out for, you know, himself, himself as everything with the gang is starting to uh, go sideways and after especially after Hosea dies and Dutch starts to kind of lose his mental capacity then because Hosea was really his mentor and Hosea was probably one of the only truly sane people oh, in, yeah. in the oh, yeah. in the bunch um, and so that he was a real like rudder for um, uh, Dutch and and when 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 Dutch, is, when Dutch lost uh, Hosea, that's when Micah obviously kind of like slipped in. And then I think for the rest for the, for the rest of us, it all just sort of organically made sense that the path that, that Micah's character was taking, you know. Mm -hmm. And then for me, it, become, it became more and more fun because it's like you, anything, you know, it was like anything could happen then. Mm -hmm. Something that Steve told me in, a, in our last conversation was that um, you practiced like spinning your revolvers about and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And you've yeah. kind of like almost mastered that, I guess. Oh, I did, I did master. I did master it. I oh, did. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, I I I I got pretty good at it. Um, yeah, yeah, that was fun because we had these replica guns. Uh, I can't, Roger knows all this crap. He knows like where the replica guns were made, manufactured, some company that does this. But these were like gun, replica guns that were the weight of the actual guns, the weight distribution wow. was the same and everything. So, you know, guns are heavy. Um, and there was a day where, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was one of the first uh, days where there was a big gunfight where I was supposed to draw my guns and put them back, or do something. I feel like it may have been the first day that we were starting, that we were doing the, um, I might be totally wrong about this, but it, it may have been the day where uh, Sean ends up getting his head blown off. But it may have also been, <laughs> it may have also been the day where I go and get my guns back after, after uh, Arthur. Oh, did you up in Valentine? Yeah. 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 Um, oh, Valentine. Strawberry. Strawberry. Well, I'm right. A, I'm a um, but I'm regardless, <laughs> um, I think I knew that day they said, oh, we're doing the scene and you may be doing some gun work. And, you know, if you could spin your guns or do something like that, I said, I don't know how to do that. And they said, well, don't worry about it. The animators can figure that out mm -hmm. uh, if, if you can't do that. Of course, the animators are probably back there going, Jesus Christ, then we got more stuff. <laughs> and so I was like, no, 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 I want, I want to do it. I got to figure out how to do it. So I was frantically in the green room looking up videos about with people spinning guns. And of course, Micah's guns are facing the other direction. Um, the, oh, yeah, yeah. The handles go in as opposed to, I'm, I look like I'm doing some sort of weird, like, dolphin thing, right? But anyway, so... <laughs> I don't know what this means, but uh, 
so his guns are reversed basically and so there's that on top of it so i had to figure out how to draw them effectively um which is an odd way i wish i had a replica gun with me to show you in person because that would be awesome but it's a yeah. weird thing where you have so i was practicing it over and over and over again and yeah my knuckles on both hands were eventually worn through oh, uh, no. and and bleeding because i was like, i gotta get this i want to do it for real and i got it and then i was doing then for the rest of the sh for the for the next few years then it was super easy so but i had to, i was wearing like tape around my fingers so that i could do it and it wasn't like <laughs> digging into my into my knuckles anymore but it looked cool was there anything else you did to kind of like get yourself prepared to be an asshole on sex you're clearly not an asshole <laughs> well, well this is just my 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 per persona k oh you don't know an in real life? you don't really know no <laughs> 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 I, I turn I turn off the computer. I'm like Jesus. That was the worst experience I've ever had. <laughs> but then the camera goes. I'm like, Hey, how's everything? No. So, um, <laughs> I forgot the question. Uh, was I drawing from things for the character? Is is what you were asking? Well, I don't know. Did you kind of like do anything off screen, like with um, your colleagues, to kind of like practice being a bit of a dick? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we would have so much fun basically off, uh, off camera and in the green room, you know, most of the time in the green room was spent, um, uh, just having a laugh with everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, I would do some, I would do my homework, uh, you know, at, um, at home and then come in and be ready. Um, but you know, the line, the, the, the script and everything is so, uh, was so clear and the directing was so clear and the other castmates were so, uh, great, uh, to work with that all that stuff just, um, became easy to do, you know, um, uh, and fun. Cause you know, honestly to show up to work, I don't know why I'm air quoting it because it was, I mean, it was work. It was a job. It was work, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. So to show up and like be able to play a character that's a total asshole, there's so much freedom in that and, and enjoyment because who wouldn't like to just like go to work and be a total dick and then walk away and, and go, get off. and then, yeah, <laughs> totally. And then just have a laugh and get paid for doing it. So wind everyone up and be like, well, it was my character, I promise. Yeah, yeah, or was it? Or was yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Something that somebody asked me the other day was, and um, I know you shaved your mustache and everything off because you got married, so congratulations on right. that. Oh, thank That's you. Um, but was that for the character or did you always have that or? No, um, well, Yes, I did all I I've had it off and on. Um for off and on I've grown that kind of mustache or variations of that for years. Mm -hmm. So uh it was when I realized that they were that's how the animators were going to to do it. I don't know when I realized that. I mean, I knew earlier on that that was one of the things that they were thinking about. I thought, well, that's great. That's perfect because I kind of do that off and on anyway. So I was wearing that style before Micah, um, and then stole <laughs> Micah stole it from me. Um, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know where the, I don't know where the, where where they came, where Rockstar, you know, I don't know who ultimately came up with that final decision or who came up with the first idea of that, but, um, but yeah, I've I've worn, I I grow a beard out, I shave it, I grow back, I shave it, and I've done that off and on for years. So I have worn that style before Micah Bell. There you go. <laughs> Not only is Micah a rat, but he's so unoriginal. <laughs> I know. He's stealing from he's stealing his look from people in the future. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> um so one of the well obviously we were discussing like right in the beginning, but um the game really has helped a lot of people and I know firsthand from like other stories from other people 
But um, how does it make you feel? And if somebody was to walk up to you and said, listen, I know your character was obviously a bit questionable for anybody with mental health issues, but um, yeah. um, that the, the game and you being part of the game has allowed them to have that escape and just make them genuinely happy. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's happened so many times, both uh, on social media, private, um, uh, private messages that I've gotten um, re relating to that. Um, also in person, um, it's happened to me at um, Comic Cons where someone's come up and expressed um, that, that sort of thing. And when it first started to happen, it really, it took me for a loop because mm -hmm. I, I really wasn't thinking, I wasn't expecting that in any way. And then, and, and, and then, um, of course, then I understood that, of course, that made total sense to me. Uh, and, and it was amazing. And it was so cool that people could come up and be so open um uh, uh, with their emotions and i mean for anyone who's struggling with um something in their life or um especially a mental health related issue uh and there's uh such a stigma attached to that in the cult in today's culture you know that's what's talk about it you know, you know stuff all inside you know and to be able to 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 uh, write about it openly or and, and to come out and to talk about it freely, especially with a complete stranger, yeah. is astounding. Um, I've had my own struggles uh, with uh, depression and anxiety uh, in the past. And, you know, I know how difficult it is to uh, um, admit it openly and to let other people in on uh, on on those feelings because sometimes those feelings don't make any sense yeah so it and so it was, it's been amazing um to to be a part of that and to experience um people being so open uh with their experiences what i love as well is and this is not just you but this is everybody all of the cast but i just love how um interactive you are with all the fans i love how you're inter you're just always chatting to people and it's so nice i love that kind of interaction <laughs> and, well thanks yeah it's i because it's super fun i mean the i feel like the fans of the game are there are there's are just there's such a a huge uh pool of really good people really talented people um and so it's it's i mean it's already now it's been what over three years i think four almost four years i think it's nearly three years actually three years, three years in october well wait yeah. 2018 did it come out 2018 yes 18 october of 2018 20, 20. <laughs> we're doing the exact same thing. i know i'm terrible at math i'm like one two three <laughs> now do you count one with your thumb do you go like one two three yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, Sometimes I go, I go two, like three, this. But... You'd go like that first? I don't know why I did that. Really? It's just like when I was counting there, kind of a <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, see, I think, I think, I don't know, I feel like in the, it, at least in a lot of the, of the U.S., uh, people are like, this is one, two, three, but a lot of other places, this is one, this is two, yeah. this is three. This looks cooler. I always think this looks cooler to go one, two, three. <laughs> This is one of the strangest tangents I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep talking about that for the next half an hour. Let's just do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so have you got any cons or anything upcoming or is this kind of restricted of COVID? Uh, well, they're coming back now. Um, I know, I know, I think Roger and Rob are doing some upcoming. Um, <laughs> Definitely they are. Uh, I can't remember where they are. I don't have anything uh, booked uh, for certain right now. I hope that things start, hope that starts happening and I hope things start picking up. I mean, a lot of it has to do with, you know, these, these, uh, these cons, if they're, if, is, is sort of fan demand also. Yes. You know? uh, I can't 
I know I don't call, you know, or, or you know, I, I can't call them up and go, can you please have me at your thing? You know, it has to do with, if, if, if they get emails or messages, if they want a certain person, then they'll, you know, they'll, they'll maybe listen to that. But yeah, that's it for now. Yeah, I, I remember, um, you know, Kylie told me that kind of stuff. And I remember I asked um, Edinburgh Comic Con if I could get a press pass so I can kind of like interview people and things like that. And they're like, no, we, need, we only accept mainstream people. I was like, okay, Of course, thanks. right, right, right. But... Whatever. <laughs> but um, but they're like, who, who do you want on? And I was kind of like listing people. And I was like, there are so many Red Dead cast members that would come to this con. You have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 well, that's all. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the, it's true, though. That's the thing. It's like, I mean, there's like the main guys, there's Rob and Roger and, you know, um, uh, Ben and, and uh, Sadie and I'm mixing names and, and characters. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the two playable characters, obviously, Roger and Rob, are, are huge draws, you know. But the thing about Red Dead is that there's such a large cast that, we're, yeah. that was so um, prevalent in the game, mm -hmm. uh, which is really unusual for a game, um, to have such a big cast that uh, where all and those roles have big roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, because I think... If I was to say to somebody, oh my God, I interviewed this person and it was like, I interviewed Reverend Swanson, they'd be like, oh! but then the other people are like, but I'm not gonna want Reverend Swanson at my con. I want um, I want John Marston. I'm like, no, right. but he was such a big part of the story as well. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Like, I like, there's so many characters that like that, well, like, like Sean, like uh, Mick, you know, like the oh. uh, characters, like people love, love that character. Yeah, exactly. You know, he would totally kill it at a, at a con, man. He would. Yeah, he would, absolutely. You know, because he has these some of these other characters that people haven't really had a chance to see or meet in, in person. You know, if they showed up at, at you know at one of those, I think they would totally kill it. Yeah, I think as well. Um, I'm not saying that like Roger or Rob has like l less appreciation. That's like absolute bullshit. But I mean, um, I think with like a smaller character and then somebody walks up to him like, oh, I think you were so great. You're kind of like, oh, I was kind of just doing this thing. I didn't realize it made that much sense. <laughs> like it made that much. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it is, it is kind of amazing also that like, with this, how, how many characters there are, how many, you know, actors were involved and and it's and I know people have commented on this, but it truly is unusual because a, a lot of us are also like friends still. So yeah, absolutely. You know, and communicate um, somewhat regularly. Uh, so it's it it it's carried over, you know, into real life. So out of all of your other roles, would you prefer to play a villain or just a completely normal character? What do you think draws you more now? Well, I mean, any character that's is interesting, um, yeah. whether they're, you know, whether they're a, a good guy or a bad guy, um, if it if it's an interesting character, then it's an interesting character. Um, you know, I feel like villains are um, are are super fun to play uh, because you have the opportunity to possibly explore some sort of darker elements that you don't normally get to explore. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, like I was saying earlier, at the end of the day, you can just sort of walk away from it. Yeah. You know? So I think playing a, someone with questionable uh, morals or ethics um, is really fun and interesting. But, you know, it still has to do with whether the character, whether it's a redeemable character or not, if it's if it's well written and if mm -hmm. it's part of a, a narrative that's interesting, then um, then sign me up, you know. Yeah. So I don't. I I love how I sound so prepared, and then in my head I'm like, I do have no idea where I'm going now. <laughs> but um, yeah. I also I really loved your live signing. You know, that was a lot of fun the other night. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Signing. You were on there. Yeah, 
I was I was um, on my break from work so I was trying to get your attention I was like I only have half an hour please just say my name at least once so that I can right I did it. right right I saw you were on there and I said you did I yeah yeah, yeah. I did see you on there okay yeah and then I had to leave and then I missed you signing it because I think I was like nearly finished my shift <laughs> I was like oh I'm glad you popped on for a little bit yeah that was super fun it's in the mail I think by the way or at least it's on its way to geek sign geek sign does whatever they do with it um yeah. But uh, I don't know how long that prints, so. Um Yeah, but that that was super fun. I, that was my first uh, like uh, online signing thing, um, and it, really was, it, it was thanks. It was it was a uh, it was uh, enjoyable. I was I was a bit anxious about it. I was a little bit nervous mm -hmm. beforehand, thinking, "The fuck am I going to be talking about for this amount of time? What yeah. do I have to talk about?" And I know a lot of it's just like. Okay, next one. Hey, here's the thing. How's it going? Yeah. Do the next one. I know that's, that a lot of it's that could, but it could I'm easily like, be so drawn out and boring. It could so easily just turn into this boring. Like, there you go. Well, I know that's there are I, some that it has to like because people have like hundreds of them, and they're just like, okay, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know, I, I know that um, I've talked, I end up talking about him in all my memories, but um, Troy Baker, especially, he's had like thousands where he has days upon days upon days doing them. And he's like, he's trying to like do music and sing songs and stuff. And he's like, I'm trying to find time to do all of this in one stream. It's so hard. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, I think I popped, I think I, I looked at one of his just to see kind of what, what he was doing. And it's almost like you're just sort of, looking down in someone's living room you know <laughs> like kind of spying on them <laughs> do, doing their doing their thing yeah. you know um but uh yeah yeah he 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 loves he loves you know but with the music now you can't do that because you can get cut off from instagram i think yes. if you play certain music and then their pro i don't know their thing recognizes that and connects you i think rob even got in trouble when he was just playing on his guitar once Oh my god! Like I, I don't understand if it was like if it was her own music. Like if Troy started playing stuff from one of his own albums, you'd be like, "Well, it's my music." Right, right. I don't know if it. it, it I feel like it might go. Oh, music. Disconnect, yeah. You know. Yeah. Which anyway. is shitty. No, it's really shitty. Yeah, yeah. Now, so next, to, if I do anything like that, maybe if I maybe hum some music. I also thought about. Uh, instead of music, just putting on like a, like the sound of a, like a thousand bees, really loud, you know, just buzzing bees, super loud. So no one can really hear what I'm saying. It's just like this deafening drone of bees in everyone's <laughs> ears, and I have to like scream over the bees. You know, I don't think Instagram could disconnect me for that because they don't know which bees. They are. It, it could be Cardi B. It could be Beyonce, Queen B. <laughs> I mean, real. I mean, little bees. <laughs> not, not, be, not people with bees in their name. <laughs> that was the worst joke I've ever said. <laughs> it was. No, it was all right. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've. I love the time since we've gone on. It's just been truly beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but um if you were to like go back was there is there anything you different you would do with Micah? i know you can't really change anything because it's rock star stuff but is right. there anything different that you would do well that's an interesting i don't think i don't think i've ever been asked that question before um uh you know i i think that the the one thing that pops into my head is that if i could go back and change any anything. I don't know what it would be specifically, but I feel like I feel like I, I would want to know from the very beginning how the whole story mm. was gonna play out all the way till the end. Like one would with a full script coming in and mm. and then being it then I would have perhaps the opportunity to sit down and and really come up with um maybe different choices regarding my character uh because i know the arc that's gonna take place 
Um, that's all. And I don't know what that would be specifically, but if anything, that would be the one thing and go, you know what, it, if I had had everything, I think maybe I could have come up with something better or different. I don't know. I don't know what that would be, but that's all, you know? Yeah. 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 But as it turned out, you know, I'm totally happy with it. Um, it, it, but, uh, yeah, that's it. That would just be like a luxury thing if, if I could go back in time and, and do that. Yeah. But I can't go back in time, Kay. I'm trying. I think we all I'm working on a machine. I'm trying. It's not, it's not Can operational. I be the first tester? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Heard it here first. I'm going to be his first tester. Yeah. First tester of my time machine. Any day now. It's just, yeah. I got to get back Yeah, to work you're now. coming. Every day I'm working on my time machine. And it just, every single time I keep throwing in animals in there and they just like, they come back just a big pile of goo. Um, Please don't turn me into a big pile of goo. No, no. It's all about the calibration. The, the settings are all off. The calibration is just a little bit off and I got to tweak it and then it'll be up and running and then I'll send you through it. Excellent. <laughs> so you've been um, acting for, well, I don't personally know, but you've been acting for quite a while now. Um, if you were to go back, another t back in time question. Another time machine question. I know. <laughs> But what would you, what advice or what would you say to your younger self? Um, <clears throat> I would say go out on, go on more auditions. This is just to my act, younger self uh, for acting advice. I would say don't skip, don't back out on, on as many auditions. Go and audition for all the things that come up. Um, don't you know don't judge what you think the thing is gonna be or the project and go you know what i'm not gonna do it or i don't you know or my ego would be too stupidly bit you know or when i'm younger you know thinking like or for a commercial audition go no i'm not doing commercials that's a sellout i'm a sellout if i do the you know, i would say no just go you got to keep going keep just keep going on the auditions that's The job is going out and and you know trying getting rejected meeting people do more of that that's what the advice would be um also i would say if i went back let me think to 2000 let's say 2003 or four i would say don't go out to dinner with your parents and, and order the crab um, because <laughs> it was a bad night um, so that would be the second thing i would do don't Yes. don't when you go out with your parents on christmas eve in 2003 don't order the crab peter That should be written on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Don't order the crab. <laughs> It might be if I eat crab again, that's what will be written on my tombstone. Man, that was a rough night. Oh my God. That's normally <laughs> a closing off question, but I don't even know what to say now. you can, we can't top that. We can't top No. that. <laughs> I like how you didn't even want to follow up with what happened. You just let we we'll leave it. We'll leave We'll it. leave it at that. I don't Yeah. really want to know. It's better to leave it up to everyone's imagination. The night of the crab, you know. I, I'm just going to say tomorrow there's going to be fan arts of like pictures of Michael Bell on the toilet <laughs> the night after eating Pearson's crab. Oh man, it was yeah, it was a it was a rough one. I'll I'll tell you though, just be, in case there's all right. It wasn't a toilet issue. See, you immediately thought, oh. It's a toilet You've <laughs> got issue. the shit. It's not. It Yeah. was an allergic reaction. All right. Okay. That's what it was. So my face like totally swelled up. That makes her even better fan art, right? Because my face like Michael blew up swollen like a face. balloon. <laughs>
yeah, my lips were huge. My eyes were like all swollen. My everything was super swollen. I had to go to the hospital and everything. And oh, I was about to say, did your throat close out? It it didn't, but that's why we went to the hospital because then I, it was starting to like get a little bit. Oh my god! It all started here, right? And then, and then we realized maybe we should go to the hospital. Well, my parents <laughs> were trying to. They were like, Peter, maybe we should go to the hospital. And I was like. No, like, nah, no, it's fine. I'm fine. I don't need to go to the hospital. And also, I had this old camcorder, so I was videotaping myself because I wanted to like, <laughs> I wanted to save it, the experience. And my my mother's like, Peter, Peter, please, you don't look like you anymore. I'm like, no, oh, it's fine. It's really cool. Look what's happened to my face. It's <laughs> oh <laughs> like. My dad's like, oh, Peter, I think we should, I should take you to the hospital now. I was like, well, I don't need to go to the hospital. And uh, <laughs> then we went and the, they, the, they immediately saw me and they're like, uh, yeah, you need to come back right now and we need to take care of this right now. And they gave me some shots in my butt and uh, whatever else. And that's the story, Kay. That's the crap right, story. So, so no, no, no shits on the toilet. <laughs> no, no. No, Stop that was that was, that was the following year. Um, oh no. <laughs> so on that note. On that note, is that we're gonna leave it on that note? Awesome. Yeah, on that note. <laughs> no, but um, is there anything that you're working on just now, or in the future, or? Right now, things are sort of. I don't want to say a hiatus, but I have. I'm having a little, a little breather right now. Mm -hmm. So I wish there was something that I could go, hey, check this out. This is coming yeah. up. Um, but right now, just taking a little breather. Um, you know, after uh, I got married, which was a long time coming um, because we had to cancel it a few times because of COVID. Um, and now this summer, going to be doing some traveling and, and just, uh, you know, enjoying um, a little bit of getting back to to normalcy uh, in light of everything that's been happening with the world. So yeah, that'll that's be good. about it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Kay. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of uh, beautiful tangents there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime you want a tangent, just, you know, give me a ring. Because um, I'm good well. with those. I'm good with just going off on whatever. Uh, but thanks, Kay. I'm super glad that we finally got to meet face to face. I know. Um, it's like one of those things. I like I've I've seen you a lot, and I've tried to talk to you, but obviously I know you're probably busy and things. And I'm like, oh well, maybe he'll, he'll respond. And eventually, when he did, I was like, oh yes. I, I know. Some there's there's so many things where I know that I I know there've been a few times in the past where you wanted to do an interview, and I was like, yeah. And then life just sort of happened, and you're like. All right, well, that guy just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Well, I apologize. But no, so finally, we, finally, we, we, we made, made it, it happen. Hang on. Uh.